Hello guys and welcome to a new Wargame video today by me Vulcan. Today we are back to tutorials and we are looking at the final of the packed uh, units and they are the helicopters. Last time I looked at the vehicles, this time we are ending the armory tutorials with the packed helicopters. So, there's not too many to talk about, probably get through them reasonably quickly, but they are a lot more diverse than I would say than the NATO units. So although this may be a little shorter than the normal tutorial, I hope that my information that I'll be providing to you uh, will be just as useful. So anyway, let's get straight into this. First of all, we have the MI2 URP Salamandra. This is the... Basically, it's a Polish helicopter comes with an auto cannon and an ATGM mainly used for reactionary defense in a lot of cases I don't see many people bringing them in but this auto cannon can be useful for taking down enemy air uh, enemy air um, and maybe some ground targets but generally people use the auto cannon for attacking air units however its later variant actually comes with the SAM missile which is the main use of these two variants but let's take a look at the ATGM anyway. Accuracy of 5, AP power of 12. So it does have the potential to be quite damaging. And if they these do hit, they can be very effective. However, this helicopter does have to sit still. It doesn't have much health and can potentially be shot down very easily. Uh, the auto cannon isn't that effective and you do run out of ammo pretty easily with the 250 rounds. Speed of 250, uh, 260 km per hour is not bad. But it's not one of the fastest helicopters to be honest I think that's probably actually the slowest helicopter or the slowest speed you can get for a helicopter which is uh, not great the stabilizer is bad the optics are poor so it basically it's a very sort of average helicopter it costs 15 more than the gazelle cannons on the NATO side and basically is sort of used for the same role in terms of reactionary rush defense maybe something like that I don't really use it too much myself so I can't really say but the reason you'd have these on your deck is for the second variant now this is the MI2 URPG uh, the Jenny Wuzi I don't know how to say that I'm sorry but basically this comes with the auto cannon, the HGM from before exactly the same they're both exactly the same, same ammo and everything like that, except from they have an extra SAM missile on in their armory. And it basically um, gives them four missiles with an accuracy of five, which isn't too bad, and a HG power of three, which is all right. It's going to take at least uh, four, four SAM missiles to take out an Apache, so I would never recommend using them for that. But they can counter enemy gazelles, possibly... I don't know, they're, they're, again, they're the, they're the rush sort of defense. And I guess if they had a mix of ground and light attack helicopters, then you could potentially get away with using these, especially against, for instance, Cobras. The SAM missiles might do well against them because the, the cannons that the Cobras have aren't very accurate and um, they do, don't tend to do a great amount of damage so you could probably get away with using these but that's their main purpose these are the HGM AA helicopters um, the nothing else really changes it's just that you get extra SAM missiles for an extra 15 points now in some cases I would say that's worth it but often it depends on the situation and I don't generally carry those, these on my deck because as packed with the most dominant uh, ground air defense in the game you shouldn't be relying on these helicopters to keep you safe in the air anyway we got the MI-24A this is the biggest series of helicopters in the game you've got the MI-24A, MI-24D and MI-24P, MI-24V and the MI-24VP now the first MI-24A doesn't come with a great ATGM it only has an accuracy of 3, AP power of 12, has to be sitting still to fire that um, it has a HMG for its main cannon, which is not great for taking out enemy uh, aircraft, uh, like enemy helicopters at all. It can't face off against them. Um, 
and you would only ever really buy these if you were lacking money and you needed the rocket pods for defense other than that they're not great um, speed of 300 kilometers per hour they'll get to where you need them to be pretty easily but they don't have a stabilizer and the optics are poor and the fuel capacity isn't great so it really does uh, depend whether or not you have the money but I would definitely recommend bringing in a MI24D if you have the extra 10 points and the reason for that is you get a Gatling cannon or a Gatling gun and this is very effective against enemy helicopters um, it's very underestimated but basically the difference between an A and a D in this case is massive yeah okay you still got the same lower stats but this cannon uh, this Gatling gun is a lot more effective than possibly even the SAMs on the MI2 URP so there's that plus you get an extra accuracy on your A to GM it's a slightly different uh, system you've got the Falanga system and the Flater system uh, na next you got the MI24P Basically what upgrades from this, uh, the MI24D to the MI24P, is the AGGM. Nothing else changes again other than the uh, gun. The rocket pods do change as well actually. I think it's basically the armaments are fully upgraded from the MI24D to the MI24P, but you are cost. it does cost an extra 25 points to upgrade to that. And the reason these are very good is because they don't cost an amazing amount. Like they're not like super expensive for the A to gem they're actually getting. You got an accuracy of four and an AP power or accuracy of nine and an AP power of fourteen. This is extremely effective and a lot of people overlook this. Yes, it has to be sat sitting still to fire it effectively, but with these rocket pods with an accuracy of four, um, they can also help suppress enemy uh, ground targets while you're setting off the HGMs because they can fire both weapon systems at the same time so you're firing your rocket pods on the enemy to stun them and then the HGMs come out and just one shot them and this actually can be reasonably effective against enemy AA so you can make the most out of it this twin auto cannon is also very good uh, for attacking enemy helicopters auto cannons are always better against helicopters than for instance Gatling guns and HMGs so auto cannons are generally favoured and therefore they will be more effective against enemy helicopters than for instance the Gatling gun and the HMG. The reason I say the Gatling gun's good though is because it has a very fast rate of fire and it has an accuracy of 4 HE power of 1. It has an extremely good rate of fire whereas the twin auto cannon is still good but it basically has probably about the same effect. Now the MI24V this is Again, you're changing the rocket pods and the main gun. You're going back to a Gatling, Gatling gun, which is, um, I would say, more favourable for this particular aircraft. You're upgrading the the rocket pods' um, ammo capacity, but you're taking away the accuracy that really makes them effective for pinning down enemy uh, vehicles. So it's. Honestly, I always prefer bringing in the MI24Ps to the MI24Vs if I'm going to do that. The MI24VP, though, you go back to just having a twin auto cannon again. So you're paying an extra five to have those rocket pods and the twin auto cannon. Whereas you already have a twin auto cannon here, but you just get in what they would, what what it's basically suggesting is that these are worse rocket pods. They're actually better. Um, these rocket pods on the MI24P compared to those on the Ap Apache so that's what makes them really really good and honestly I don't think these two variants are really worth it unless you run out of MI24Ps to bring into the field there's no other difference than the armaments if you just look there's no difference yeah okay the, the rocket pods and the the uh, Gatling gun change but I mean what I mean is um, you're basically paying more for technically rocket pods which are worse yeah okay you get that extra you get the extra rockets but it, honestly 20 rockets is enough to stun any ground vehicle now you also have the MI24 ALSK and the MI24D LSK these are the um, 
East German variants. They both cost five less. So if you're not planning on bringing on any heavy sort of helicopters, these can be on your deck because they are cheaper than the original MI-24A and the MI-24D. So if you want to use MI-24Ds for anti-air, then these can be very effective and actually quite cost effective because these 64 rockets that you can get on the MI-24Ds can be awesome for pinning down ground units and uh, also for taking out infantry. So don't underestimate them. Um, the East German variants in this case can be worth bringing in, um, especially if you don't want to pay that extra five points. Now we've got the, the beautiful Havoc on the pack side. This is the equivalent to the Apache, obviously on the NATO side. It comes with a HGM system similar to the Havocs, uh, similar to the Apache, sorry, which allows it to fire on the move. But the biggest difference between the Havoc and the Apache is the ammo that they have. They have 16 HGMs on the Havoc. On the Hellfire system with the Apache, you only get eight. But the difference is the Hellfire system on the Apache fires, I think, almost twice as quickly as the Havoc does. And now I don't think the, if we just go down back down to the uh, helicopters and have a look at the Apache, you can see the ATGM, it says it has the same rate of fire, but I've, I, I've always thought that it fired faster. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's been changed at all. I'm not, I don't think it has. But I, I would always presume that the Apache fires like almost twice as fast because that's one thing that's quite annoying with the Apache is that it fires too many rockets. It fires like two at the same target and then the first one blows up and the second one misses. So there's that that's quite annoying. Whereas the Havoc, it doesn't fire another one until the first one misses. That's the difference between the two systems and therefore technically the Havoc shoots slower. Although in theory they shoot at the same speed. Now, it gets confusing, but that's just, I think, the way it is. So anyway, you've got those uh, rocket pods with uh, only 10 rockets, but they are very accurate, similar to the MI-24P uh, rockets. It's got the same similar accuracy, and that can be used for pinning down enemy uh, AA, for instance. If you're feeling lucky and you want to go up against an enemy AA, uh, having those rocket pods can be very useful for stunning it, while you take it out with an ATGM and obviously this auto cannon is also very good with an AP power of one uh, can be reasonably useful but not ideal you should never really be in the range to use that speed 350 kilometers per hour probably possibly the fastest um, helicopter on the pack side and we've got no stabilizer so it's not great for finding that auto cannon on the move but it doesn't really need it because the HGM system is the only thing you really need to fire on the move and uh, that's not really affected by a stabilizer so then you've got the the optics which are normal operational range and fuel capacity keeps it healthy around the map so I wouldn't worry about that too much but basically these have 10 health exactly the same as the Apaches so the only thing you really have to be worried about with with Havocs is the Marta 2s and the Chaparral's on the enemy team. So now we've got the mi 8 the classic uh, air troop transport for the packed side. It's just a troop carrier, does the job. We've got the mi 8 tv however, which is an insane uh, aircraft for stopping rushes. Now, I think this used to be cheaper, but they, they increased the price because everyone was using it. But basically, the MI-8TV, some people just bring this deck, for example, um, or put these, the MI-8Ts on their deck, even though the first one isn't armed, purely for these rocket pods. And that's because even though they only have an accuracy of 2 and a H power of 1, these, these 64 rocket pods... If you bring in a couple of MI-8 TVs when you're trying to defend against a rush or trying to push onto a large bunch of units, they can be very effective. They can help stun those units very, very easily. And that's the main, main point with rockets. 
They're there to stun units. They don't necessarily destroy them unless they have no armor or they are infantry. So generally using one of these is for that stunning purpose or for breaking the units with technical difficulties and stuff like that. So that's what it's mainly used for and that 300 km per hour speed isn't bad either for getting them into position. They're never going to really run out of operational range, well they're never going to really run out of fuel so don't worry too much about that. Now the third variant however, I don't see these used very often. Um, yeah you get an HGM but the HMG, maybe if this was a, ca a cannon, these would come in handy. They would be like basically the same as the Salamandra. But they don't have the auto cannon, so they kind of become a bit useless because the HMG is not very good. Whereas this HGM is not reliable enough to spend 35 points for. Then you've got the MI-17. Uh, again, you just get the Uber rocket pods, but for 45 points just for a rocket pod aircraft, it's it's not it's not useful at all. Um, generally, you just want to bring in an MI-24A or 24D. And then finally you've got the MI-8 versions on well, the East German MI-8Ts, uh, MI-8TV etc. So generally it's up to you what you bring in but I would it doesn't really matter what MI-8Ts you put on your deck if you want them but if you're bringing them in make sure you know what that you're using them for and it's basically for these rockets. Um, I would basically always recommend that you you have the Havoc and the MI-24A on your deck um, normally the packed um, versions because the MI-24P is really really good um, however if you're not planning on using anything too expensive then just go for the East German variants of both the MI-8 uh, MI-24 and the MI-8T so it's really up to you but I always like to have the Havocs on my deck for a serious play because Havocs are the ones which can really pop those big tanks with uh, a gem that actually has an active 11 and AP power of 12 or 14 sorry and that's uh, probably one of the most effective HGMs in the game so don't overlook that and um, that's basically it for the helicopters on the pack side hopefully this has been useful it's not been really long but that is I've literally looked at pretty much every unit separately on both the NATO and Pact Armory, so I really hope this has helped. Um, I will possibly do a couple of extra tutorials to do with game mechanics again, but um, I'm likely to leave them till later. It, I'll be moving on to gameplays more often, and hopefully, maybe if I get my hands on a war game air land battle key, I can do some videos on that. I really, really want to get onto that as quickly as possible. Um, not just because of views and YouTube and stuff like that. I honestly just want to play it and find out what it's like and obviously give you recordings of it. Start teaching you guys about it before you even play it so you have a head start when we get onto it. That's basically the idea of it. But unfortunately so far I haven't got a key so we're just like, waiting on that at the moment. Anyway, hopefully these tutorials have been useful and yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.